For artists and writers, the work they do is often personal, but something they want to share with the world. Today, self-publishing is more accessible than ever, and some are choosing creative control over the corporate model. Four locals are sharing their work their way through self-publishing, a process that is really more of a journey. And I went into Anderson's bookshop and I said, hi, um, I'm looking for the book that tells me where to go, what to do, how to involve my children. And they said, ah, great idea, but we don't have that book. And I said, okay, mental note, I'm going to write that book. A friend and I, we were exchanging dating experiences and that kind of stuff. And, uh, just started writing out tips of like what not to do. And we hit it off and started working together and writing love lorn teenage songs together. It's beautiful and stuff. Now we kind of do that, just the adult version. <laughs> As a kid, our parents made us all take lessons and so the interest was always there. For Ted Slowick, that interest grew as he performed throughout his adult years in bands and at open mic nights. Realizing his dream to make an album came after losing his brother. And he was uh, 59 years old. So at the time I was 44 and I thought, well, you know, geez, any of us can go at any time. But, you know, if I go when he goes, I got like 15 years left. And, and then you start to think, you know, what do I really want to do? And, and so, you know, it's just about making the most of the time you have and, and just living every day like it could be your last. His second career, as he calls it, isn't lucrative in the traditional sense. But for Ted, it isn't about money. Rather than like, you know, uh, a guy at my age, you know, spending money on a red sports car. I mean, I'm, I'm investing in, in this sort of career if you will, and, and putting a lot of money into it, um, but not making much back. But that's okay because, again, my measurement of success is just how rewarding it is to me personally. And Ted has recognized that the interconnectivity of the internet has really transformed the music industry. Whether you're an author or any type of artist, it's opened up all kinds of opportunities. We're on what we call the long tail, you know, where the, the head is those famous artists that you hear about and they get all the support from the record labels and stuff. But, um, and then there's this long tail where, where it's like there could be good stuff out there and there could be some not so stuff, good, not so good stuff out there. But it's in, in, important that you, you're just sort of doing and getting out of it what you want out of it and the rest will work itself out, I think. Just as Ted uses his own experiences to create music, Neighborville resident Jenny Sauer is using her personal life as inspiration for the book that she's publishing. Jenny's career started as a medical researcher publishing her findings for the medical world to read. Now she's written a much different body of work. Her book is about her dating experiences and learning from them. To know that other people have gone through some pretty wonky things and they're okay. and. If you read some of those things, you can be like, oh, well, that can happen to me. And then just learn from it and try to look at it in a different perspective instead of taking it too personally. The choice to self-publish involved some teamwork. I had a friend from, gosh, probably like six or seven years ago contact me. She was in Chicago. She happened to be a book publicist. So, yeah, we added another person to the team. Shannon Green Rob and Laura Phillip know how important teamwork is when it comes to self publishing. Their group, Birdie Song, has been working on an album for a few months. Laura usually creates these crazy things on her computer and then brings them over to me and says, Here, play this. And um, we kind of go from there. And then um, a lot of it just kind of back and forth and a little music dialogue, if you will, of, let's mm -hmm. try this, or ooh, that sounds really cool here, there. That's really how we work. And then we kind of, we bring in Jamie, and then he has his own unique talents and styles mm -hmm. and, yeah. and thoughts, and you know, oh, we never thought about that. And it's, it's really kind of a collaborative group yeah, for sure. effort. For this group of artists, sharing their music was a goal that seemed to come naturally. To be able to get it out to a wider audience, especially now, the music business is so different, and there's so much self-production, and, um, uh, like grassroots marketing type of stuff and it's like if you make an album you can get it out there to practically anyone in the world mm -hmm. and to be able to share what we're doing makes it more real for us I think. Self-publishing was a way for everyone in the group to use their unique talents and keep ownership of their work. Coming together and having this kind of combined sound and to have other people kind of poke at that. It's like, no, let's just really kind of put out there what we all believe mm -hmm. is good work. Right. Elizabeth Gratz wanted that control when she published her book, Live and Laugh in Naperville, a guide to life and fun times. 
When you self-publish, you have complete control and creativity in what occurs in that publication. And so for us, I have a very strong design group and I also had my plan. And if you're going to self-publish, you clearly have to have an ability to sell too because you don't have a large name behind you distributing your book. And I had that ability. And so... For me, it worked perfectly. Elizabeth gathered information over the years, and when her youngest child started first grade, she began the publishing process, which started with finding a printer that would make the book. It was great, but the beauty of working with Mike was, one, he held my hand the whole way. Like, I had a person. When you're going to huge publishing companies, though you have somebody, it's not like I can text you or call you or say, okay, I'm on page 37 and this isn't working, and should I move it to page? Michael was very good at helping us. He basically held our hand through the process. Just like a lot of others who turned to self-publishing, the experience was a life lesson. In the end, the goal was just to break even, which I'm not sure we have. But you, the, the monetary aspects of it are, you don't do it, I didn't do it for the money at all. I did it to, one, accomplish a dream, which I did. Two, I needed to set an example for my children that when you start something, you finish it. And if you have a vision, you can make it a reality. And I also, um, you know, I, I started it and I needed to finish it. And self-publishing allowed me to finish it. And money? Nope, I don't make money, but <clears throat> I sure have a good time. No matter what the format, all those who want to share their work hope they can have an impact on the people they touch. There's something really significant about art that um, you can leave behind, you know, it, it has that, that sense of timelessness where it's like we have captured this moment in time and now it will be there forever. It's about the search for beauty because um, there's nothing quite as magical as, as discovering the beauty in music. When you read it, have fun. It's very, I always refer to it as whimsical. I think it's a happy book, and that was my goal, was that you would pick it up and you would be like, like this is adorable. For the local self-published artists I spoke with, attaining their goals made the labor of love worth every minute. I'm Jordan Abadea reporting for Naperville News Extra.